So Jabberwockies was founded in 2003, but then when the, the TV show happened, we, um, I think we just kind of got hit, man. I'm not going to lie, bro. Like, I got, you know, I got caught up. Bruce Lawn. Guys, we have a fantastic conversation today with the hosts of the Good Service Podcast. Hey, hey. We have Ben and Kevin. Thank you guys so much for being here. Now, something interesting, you guys are both kind of, before we get into the podcast stuff, are crushing it in your own right. <laughs> um, you come from the dance world. I do. Uh, specifically, you did the residency in Vegas with the Jabberwockies. Yeah, with the Jabberwockies. That's yep. incredible. Can you yep. pull the mic up a little bit closer yeah, while absolutely. keeping it down? There we go. Actually, are we Just good? a bit more. There we right go. There. Okay. And Ben, you're a chef, entrepreneur, restaurant guru. You know, everyone thinks I'm a chef. You're not a chef, technically. But I just love food and work with great chefs. Okay. Yeah. So you're the chef of the chef. The chef. You're the, the chief chef. chef. The chief chef. <laughs> Let's there go. I love food. There that can is. preach. Guys. Okay. So we had a great conversation over we on did. your guys' podcast that yep. just came out. So we'll be sure to link that below yeah. so people can go check that out. Um, but I want to hear a bit more of your guys' individual stories. Okay. Sure, and then yeah. how we got into doing the Good Service Podcast. Yeah. Well, and speaking it, of which, man, we got a gift for you, bro. Hey, oh, snap. We got you a exclusive, okay. hot off the presses, good service. Right. Uh, we got a ball cap there, man. Just there we to go. Yeah, I feel like it goes <laughs> you, fit too, man. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but yeah, man, um, Good Service Pod, it's been almost a year old now. We okay. actually started it in March of 2023, so we're like just about to hit our one year. Okay. Um, it started off as a passion project between Kevin yeah. and I, and so... As you touched on, um, you know, we both come from just different industries. We're both kind of entre entrepreneurial. I come from the dance, professional dance industry. I was with the crew Jabberwockies. Um, you know, we we did a t TV show back in 2008, mm -hmm. uh, America's Best Dance Crew that we won. And that kind of just like kicked us off on this crazy roller coaster of just, um, you know, touring the world to eventually like landing a residency show in Las Vegas at the MGM Hotels. And... Um, since then, um, I've been back in LA in since 2014, and then I joined uh, another crew called the Kinjas, which I'm a co-owner of, and it's another international dance brand. And I've uh, been doing that. So dance has kind of been the prominent thing for the last 20 plus years. Mm -hmm. And uh, Kevin and I, we became friends over the pandemic, okay. and uh, you know, just kind of meshing both worlds of entertainment and and you know, food, dance, and then all of it, kind of just like, yeah, yeah, that's all cool. But man, we we like we want to just kind of just do like life, but in a way that we can invite people into the normal thing that we do, but how God is integrated in everything. And so just conversations led up to us thinking about like, should we do a podcast? Mm -hmm. And then we kind of came on the idea of like good service because it kind of revolved around food because that's just how we met was mm -hmm. like over these meals and things like that. Mm -hmm. So like, yo, man, let's just do a, a, a podcast where we just have a conversation over a meal. We'll bring in, you know, folks that, you know, we know in different spaces, whether that be in traditional ministry or the, you know, marketplace ministry, entertainment. And that's kind of the birth of good service. And so we've been rocking now for almost a year. That's what's up. So transitioning from dance, well, specifically Jabberwockies to the Kinjas. Did I say that right? Kinjas, Kinjas, right? yep. Um, what, would you feel like maybe there was a bit less faith integration than you would have preferred? Was that kind of some of the burden for doing some of the creative stuff? Because I've always heard mm -hmm. the Jabberwockies being here in San Diego yeah. that you guys were faith-based, so there were some faith-based Christian Yeah, there, there are some believers like in, in the crew. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, we never overtly did anything christian you know like mm -hmm. i mean we wear these white masks and you know it, <laughs> it, if anything it was about bringing out music and showcasing what movement and music looks like mm -hmm. and so that was kind of our whole thing but you know yeah like as the people behind the masks you know there there were a few of the the homies myself included who do love god mm -hmm. but we never really put that out in our creative output was that hard as someone that that loves jesus and wants to make him known right uh was it was was there that this integration was that kind of tough to not be able to be maybe more overt in terms of your profession or did were you always cool with kind of like okay this is the dance world and this mm -hmm. is what i'm i'm i get the privilege of doing this here mm -hmm. and my faith is my faith because i think there's a lot of 
creatives that kind of wrestle with that, right? right? Like right. whether you're a dancer or you're running a business or you are some, some of my friends who are artists that we've talked about, right? And, the, and that tension of how much do I share? Do I share? Because if I share too much, then it's going to alienate people. Mm. I'll tell you a conversation I had with one of the biggest TikTokers recently about his own tension with all of this and mm. wanting to be more overt with his faith. And he has right. one of the biggest music TikToks out there. Mm -hmm. And so this is stuff that people are wrestling with. So w when you were in that situation, what was that like for you? I think for me, I never really felt this pressure or even need to be like, I need to let the world know that I'm a Christian in mm -hmm. everything that I do and say. Mm -hmm. um, I think I was just, but you know, I, I, I have a different view of it now, but I think then it's like, yo, I'm going to do what I do because this is what God has given me the platform to do. And then, you know, hopefully if I get to actually engage with people, um, when they engage with me in through conversation, they're going to see what drives me. But I would say during those years though, I mean, I did, I mean, this sort of overnight success thing kind of was what I was experiencing. And, you know, we went from being these guys who were just trying to dance and make a living. And then somehow, it, you know, I use my air quotes of overnight, we became like the name and the face of dance. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And we were young dudes at the time, so we weren't ready for that. And mm. so I think when we got that sort of recognition um, and when I use the overnight success air quotes, I mean, we had been doing this for over a decade mm -hmm. prior to even prior getting to recognized. Prior to 2008? Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, wow. we started, uh, so Jabberwockies was founded in 2003. Okay. And so at least five years as the Jabberwockies. <laughs> as the crew, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No TV. We were just doing shows and we were just like, yo, we love dance. We're homies and, you know, this is us just getting down because we love it. But then when the, the TV show happened, we've had, you know, years of just prepping for mm -hmm. this and, uh, you know, when we actually finally had that opportunity, um, I think we just kind of got hit, man. I'm not going to lie, bro. Like I got, you know, I got caught up, you know, with that lifestyle. And so even more so my faith was very like compartmentalized mm. and, and like the, 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 the balance, so to speak, was mm. off, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, and, mm -hmm. and I, I think I was just kind of like, yeah, you know, I'm a Christian, but, you know, I'm, I'm going to do my thing here. And I think my thing here became more of the focus mm. where I like kind of lost my way. Mm. And so, you know, in 2013 was when I had this sort of like radical, mm. like re-encounter with God mm. and and like God was shaking me up and he's like, bro, what are you doing? Mm. You know, like this isn't the life that mm. I called you to. And, and so you know, without getting too crazy into it, like that was where I de rededicated my life back to the okay. Lord. And that became more of a, a fire. And like, uh, I'm like, yo, man, I don't want to keep this so like, not that I was trying to keep it under wraps, yeah. but I want to bring that out a little bit more to the forefront. You know, it's interesting because mm. I wonder if keeping it under wraps is something that may cause that drift to happen mm. some, for some people. Right? Yeah. So you're like, yo, it's just my faith. I'm going to compartmentalize. Yeah. I'm here to serve people by just dancing, and mm -hmm. that's it. And so do you think there's any correlation? I mean, because you guys had the—how long did the residency in Vegas go for? That uh, was a big deal. Yeah, started in 2010, and it's still going strong to okay. this day, you know? So and when did you when did you kind of phase out of that? Uh, twenty End, end of 2014. So I did almost five years from the beginning of it, and then, you know, I kind of um, left around that 2014. Okay time yeah w was that hard to transition from that because i'm assuming oh, vegas man. the strip the money's probably great yeah right you're in front of thousands of people a night talk to me about that dude it's weird bro <laughs> you know <laughs> like a in a very yeah front facing you think that it's bro you you kind of haven't made what do you why do you need to change it up mm -hmm. And that's the interesting thing about when when the God is when God's tugging at your heart, mm -hmm. when the Holy Spirit's trying to activate something in you, mm -hmm. there's no denying that that's the thing that you're actually craving. Mm. You know, yeah, you said money, comfort. It's so weird, bro. Like I I call Las Vegas the more Hollywood Hollywood. Mm. You know what I mean? Like it's mm. what people think about how Hollywood is. It's all it's all plastic and it's all about who you are and what can you do for me kind of thing. Vegas is that on steroids. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? So <laughs> for us, you know, we got free treatment to everything. You know, we want to go to the club. We want to go to shows. We want to go to restaurants. It's just like VIP treatment for everything. So if you think that's what life is, we had it, mm. you know? And, um, but something about that just wasn't it mm. and i was feeling maybe i don't want to say maybe I, I know this is it is because the roots of where my heart truly 
was was like it's in Jesus, but I think I've been kind of pushing that mm. to the corner. Mm. And God, by His grace, was like, "Hey, you know that's not where it's supposed to be. That's supposed to be at the very top." Mm. Was there anything specific that happened that caused this encounter, then transition out of the Vegas totally Jabberwocky totally. scene that that you could share? Yeah, I mean, um, I, thank God I was still going to church on Sundays. That was kind of the only thing that I was doing for my faith, you know? I wasn't in healthy community. I was just kind of running with the crew, and then on Sundays I would go to church. And um, sometimes that's all it takes, you know? And I was just sitting in a sermon one Sunday, and, you know, my pastor was uh, teaching at a revelation, you know, the be hot or cold, not lukewarm. Mm. And I was like, cool, I've heard this one, you mm. know? Like, let me just cruise through this sermon, and then... God was like, you ain't cruising through this one. Like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get right into the heart, mm -hmm. your heart. We're gonna do some surgery today, mm -hmm. and the Lord uh, made it very clear. He's like, I'm talking to you. You are the lukewarm that I'm talking Jeez. about here, and it just hit me like a ton of bricks, bro. I, I broke down in tears, and it was like the scales fell off again. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm like, whoa, like how did I get here? Mm -hmm. You know, I was living all kinds of, you know dual lifestyle two-faced lifestyle and i was i was living in sin and i was engaged to be married at the mm. time there was a whole lot that was happening and just even what i was going through with the crew things were shifting and then i felt like god was saying you need to come back and i said okay god i'm, I'm ready to come back but then i don't even think i knew what that meant because mm. it took a whole year after that I was in 2013 when mm -hmm. this happened mm -hmm. it took a whole year of me um learning what needed to be deconstructed, what needed to be broken mm -hmm. in order for God to rebuild. And mm. that was painful, bro. Mm. There was just like, yo, this might not be for you anymore. Are mm. you are you able to leave this? Mm. Are you able to trust me? Because then, you know, when I'm talking to my friends, sorry about that, when yeah. I'm talking to my friends about, yo, man, I don't know if this is for me anymore. Mm. I, I might need a dip. Mm. Of course, everybody's question is like, so what are you going to do then? I'm mm. like, I don't know. Mm. They're like, well, you probably shouldn't leave this until you know, mm -hmm. you know, like that's mm -hmm. not smart. <laughs> mm -hmm. And my answer to that was, yeah, I don't think that's the move. I think the move is to respond to what God is saying. God mm. is saying, get up and go, mm. you know? And 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 I, I got that very clear image of Jesus calling Peter to step out onto the water. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, you know, Peter knows like, yo, this is water. It's mm. not walkable ter terrain, sure. you know what I mean? Sure. And then, but Jesus said, but Peter said, Lord, if that's really you, command mm. me to come out. Yeah. And he said, come out. And he stepped and he started walking. So, you know, to me, it was like, I didn't feel like the Lord was saying, you need to know what's on the other side of that step. I felt like what the Lord was saying, you need to know that I'm calling you to step and mm. trust that you're going to walk when you step. And so mm. I stepped out, left Vegas, left the whole thing, came back to L.A., nothing planned. And and then the Lord quickly met me because I thought dance and all that was over, too. But then uh, I had linked with, um, you know, two of my friends, Mike and Anthony, who started Kinja's at the time. And they they reached out to me. We linked up. Long story short, they're like, yo, man, help us build Kinja's. You know, and, and I, I felt that there was a deeper reason and meaning for me to do dance because I thought dance was over. It's so mm. closely tied to Jabberwockies mm. that it was almost this like traumatic thing. Like I can't dance because it's so close to what I just came from. Mm. But God reframed what dance was supposed to be for. And he was like, build, use this for my kingdom. I gave you this because I give you access to people. Mm -hmm through this mm -hmm. so use that as your way to access people for my kingdom mm. so i said okay god let's do that wow so yeah that's incredible what uh to to, to kind of pinpoint a bit more practically you you feel this tug this to, to, to step out on faith was there things that you had kind of taken care of in your personal life practically like did you have some money saved up were you able to kind of make that transition where you weren't just going from like yeah, yeah. you know what i mean like yes. oh i'm set yeah to like nothing you <laughs> right, know like right. was there was there lifestyle creep bad meaning you were just kind of blowing all your bread or were you like in a stable space yeah. financially to take because i think that's a lot of things that aren't factored in when people are taking those steps of faith right. is like if you are halfway wise that transition is way smoother <laughs> when God tells you to go. Because right? yeah. yes, if God's telling wild. you to like, yo, I want you to move mm -hmm. from yeah. Vegas, leave your life behind, mm -hmm. and follow me in this way. Mm -hmm. And you're like, all right, I'm going to have to go drive for Uber, right? right. Or like, yeah. okay, cool, I got a little bit of an on-ramp <laughs> mm -hmm. to, to help me move and then figure out yeah. what I'm going to do. Yeah. What, what was that like practically? Yeah, praise God. I was halfway wise. Okay. <laughs> you know, I had I had some bread saved up. Okay. Um, And, you know, and and... 
bless bless the homies, man. You know, as I departed, they gave me you know kind of a departing gift as well. So that, oh, that's that, dope. Yeah, that's it dope. was it was a blessing, man. And you know, even with that, I was like, I they didn't have to, you know. Mm -hmm. So like God already knew how mm -hmm. He was planning to take mm -hmm. care of me. And so, yeah, that year of, you know, 2014 was my transitional year. Mm -hmm. And, you know, thank God I was able to live off of just the things that I kind of had saved up. Mm. And uh, that gave me that breathing room to figure out um, now that I was kind of like, all right, I'm going to do this Kinjas thing. Mm -hmm. Like, he here's how we got to like start. If we're going to be a business, like, boom, here's some like foundational things that we got to get mm -hmm. you know in place. Mm -hmm. So we just kind of laid down the foundations of that year. And man, like when God has a plan, like he knows how to like super speed you into whatever mm -hmm. that plan is. Mm -hmm. yep. Cause 2015, which was the year right after all of this foundational, that's when that very show that we won ABDC on MTV that came back for, for a season eight. And that was in 2015. And then they invited Kenjas to be on that show. Wow. Full circle. For, full circle. Like literally a whole, I mean, from season one to season eight, like yep. literally, you know, like, yep. and that season eight was supposed to be season of champions, mm -hmm. meaning they wanted to bring back all the previous mm -hmm. winners of the seasons before to compete to become the ultimate America's mm -hmm. best dance crew, <laughs> which was funny because Kenjas had never competed. We were mm -hmm. never on the show prior. Wow. But. Kinjas was comprised of a lot of former ABDC champions like myself from Jabberwockies. Mm -mm. And then Mike Song was on Kaba Modern. He was also season one. They were a fan favorite crew. There were a couple of homies that were like on Most Wanted crew that were also in part of part of Kinjas. So the way that the producers saw it is like, yo, man, this is kind of like the all-stars of all these other teams that these guys were on. And now they are like this like sort of all-star, all-star crew. So they brought us on as like this wild card crew, and then we made it all the way to the finals. It was between Kinjas and Quest Crew. We lost the Quest Crew at the end, but mm -hmm. you know we we gained a lot of uh, exposure. We gained a ton of followers and fans. That even though we lost the show, we did a crowdfunding campaign. That our intention was to win the show to use that money to build a dance studio, and um, you know the prize was like a hundred k. And uh, we didn't win the 100K, but we're like, yo, let's do a crowdfunding campaign. We raised like 127K in 30 days. Come on, bro. And so we're like, I guess we won. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because yeah. that was the whole point of the show. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. we're like, man, like the power of, you know, building, um, you know, a community of people to support you and then, you know, get, getting that right opportunity of exposure and then God breathing on mm -hmm. it. It's like, hey, I'm, I'm going to accelerate this thing, you know, so that you guys can kind of be in that position. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, so that was, man, already, you know, 2015, 14 to now it's been 10 years, you know what I'm saying? So here wow. we are. How poetic, man. That's a trip, bro. That's a trip. That's crazy. Okay. So, um, thank you for sharing that, man. So I want to hear more about your, yeah. your food journey. Cause when I shared our, um, the real of on me on your guys' podcast, yeah. Yeah. a couple of people reached out and was like, yo. He's the real deal when it comes to this food thing. <laughs> and I was like, okay. Yeah. I, I had glanced at your okay. socials a little bit. Okay. You know what I mean? And I understood yeah. Yeah. that you were in that. You told me, like, yeah, this yeah. is what I do. So yeah. tell me a bit about your journey and some of the stuff you're doing in 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 that world. Yeah, absolutely. Um, shout out to the people that told Ruslan that I <laughs> that enjoy my food game. Thank you. Um, you know what? My uh it all started actually only about four years ago. It hasn't been that long. Mm. Uh, I give a lot of props to one of the co-founders of a lot of projects I'm in, Andy Wynn. A shout out to Philip. Uh, we we basically we have a company called Secret Sauce Society. It's a simple, simply put, it's not simple, but simply put, it's it sounds like a food <laughs> Illuminati right there. That's fire. Secret Sauce Society. Yeah, That's the sickest yeah. name, dude. That's an <laughs> ill name, bro. Thank when you, people say you, it's you. not about the name, sometimes it's about the name. Sometimes the name just the sets an yeah. ill precedent. Thank That's you, fire. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, it's um. Everything we do is word of mouth, so it really does match what we do. But it's food entertainment. So, like, what what does that look like? Uh, we bring brands, so we bring digital brands to a physical place. So we try to create a food brand or restaurant around the idea. Um, that's one. The other thing we do is we like to work with people that have influence and build a restaurant around them. So we've worked with celebrities and built brands for them. So, uh, j simply put, what put us on the map first was Bored and Hungry, which was a Smash Burger brand. It was the first NFT restaurant, mm -hmm. and it was during the hype of Bored Apes and all that. I don't know if anyone knows that out there. Look them up. It was this craze during 2021, 2022, and we were in the hype of that. And the moment we created a restaurant where you could take digital currency and buy a burger, people lost their minds because <laughs> they were like, wait, hold on. 
all of a sudden, all this fake money is real money? So you're talking like Bitcoin and Doge <laughs> yes. and that sort of stuff? Yeah, so we accepted Ethereum, we accepted Bitcoin, and we accepted ApeCoin. Okay. Specifically because it was a bored and hungry themed restaurant. So when you got in there, we we had apes of our own. Like we bought the NFT, and it was our first large viral project we did together. And when I say viral, the day that we opened, it was like four hour lines. Uh, I think fifteen hundred people showed up into the block in Long Beach, California. We shut down the block, and literally people flew in to eat this burger. Like mm. it was like a moment in time. What happened after that was immediate virality. I'm talking. We hit like. 84 articles in one day and we traveled to asia london uh canada all over the U u.s we started traveling to not only expose the brand but to be part of this like monstrosity which was the blockchain community like it was crazy at mm. that time and we were invited to speak everywhere we're talking about community culture and technology like how do we mix it together how do you make utility after uh, after all this talk about like hey this does that and whatever because everything was so digital but we were bringing it to real life quickly and they were like how are these guys doing it so fast honestly we're just like asian hustlers you know what i mean like we're just <laughs> we're just working hard bro like that's what yeah. we don't do anything new yeah it's just a different hustle and we're just working hard and during that we had some viral brands like we we work with snoop we create an ice cream brand with him shout out shout out to the dogs team uh, shout out uh, Cordell, <laughs> but uh, you know we work with them and it was it was great. Um, he was they were really into the blockchain community as well, so we got to collab on some projects there. And then uh, shout out Bun B, you know in Houston and H Town. Um, That's right. He had a he had a restaurant too. Trail right? Burger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're we're the same team that was part of that right in the beginning and building that up. So we're still out there in Houston. Uh, it's blowing up everywhere, by the way. Uh, Trail Burgers, we love you, but. Um, and so we got to work with all of these different uh, cultural brands at the time, and it just continued to skyrocket. Now, where does God come into this story, and how am I sitting here today with you? Just all I care about today is getting the voice of God and the message of God out. In the midst of that, I'll be honest, man, I was in that room, like, and I could still picture it. It's like Steve Aoki, a dressing room type, type location. It was much bigger than a regular dressing room. Every celebrity on the planet's in there. I'm rubbing shoulders. I don't even know everyone's name. And I felt like empty. Mm. I was like chasing money and clout. I was there, man. Like, were you were you walking with God at, at this point as well? Or what was that? So like? I'm and this is the real truth is that I've been I I grew up Christianese, right? Okay. My whole life. You know, you were around church your whole life and you know God, mm -hmm. you know things about God. You think you're living that, you know, Christian life, but I didn't really have a relationship like a proper one anyway. Mm. You know what I mean? Like it was very you were more like down. cultural Christian. Yes, mm -hmm. way more cultural Christian. I thought I was I almost like was mad at myself thinking back now like, man, weren't you better than that? But I really wasn't. Mm. So I was really chasing money and clout with the disguise of like hashtag blessed, hashtag Jesus, like, mm. you know, saying I'm Christian, not living that life, hoping that my Sunday experience will somehow just bleed into my life. Like I would have these moments with God during that time where I would just be depressed, mm. tired, going, God, like, is this, is this what life is supposed to be? Is this what chasing the world and you looks like? Like, I was literally living by two or three masters at that time because I thought that's what hmm. was okay. You don't know too much. The Sunday experience is great, and then you take that mask off, and you know here's the rest of the week, right? It's interesting. It sounds like both of you guys are going to church in the midst of all this. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Wow. And I'm going to tell you, one thing I will say is that's the seeds that God sows. Is I, This is why I love generational faith. Whenever I meet somebody and I feel like they have good parents, I ask them. And the reason why I get that feeling is because they walk and talk different in faith. So I go, where did you learn that? And they go, oh, my, my mom, my dad, they love Jesus. And I'm like, I knew it. Mm. And I didn't come from that background, meaning like I had a great mom, no father. So like me and Ben have a lot of similarities in that sense. And that little seed, my mom woke up 5 a.m. every morning and pray for me. You know what I mean? That's generational mm. faith. That's something that we don't realize is that that's how powerful God is, bro. He puts that seed in there so young that no matter how far you stray, it still burns at you. And you're like, 
what is that? Why am I depressed? Like, why am I not okay? And I was sitting, I've heard Ben's story so many times, but what's great is like, as I'm sitting here, as he's reflecting and putting in a nice package, I was like, this is why we're so close, bro. Mm -hmm. Is because like, we share that. We yeah. share so much of that, that path. And hitting that upper echelon of the people and whatever, there's just not a lot of stuff there. So yeah. to tell me how has, how did you pivot from that? And yes. kind of what are the, are you doing similar stuff now? Yeah. Yeah. What are you doing? So how, what's, how would, yeah, what's it so look like now? So the funniest thing about God, this is God's funny. So he gives you a platform, right? He gives you these things. You, he gives you these skills. He's, he, he knows you. He loves you. Why would he want to take things away that you're good at? He built you a certain way, right? And he's given you this platform. So I mistakenly, when I had that radical, I had a radical experience with God in December 2022. And literally, I heard the voice of God, as, as woo-woo as it sounds for the audience. Man, that's just the experience I had. And when that happened, I was like, okay, God, everything I have is yours. And in January, I was like, this is how pastors must be made. <laughs> so I was like, cool, I'm just going to quit everything. And I'm just going to move on. And I'm going to go go be a pastor or something. So I remember going up to my partners in January saying, hey, man, I think I think I'm done. And they're like, just like that, oh, just like that. <laughs> and they were like, um, like, is it, a, they thought it was a relationship problem. Yeah. And I was like, no guys, like I'm just going through something. Just, I, I think I'm going to walk away. Hmm. However, with good counsel and, and just sitting with the Lord, um, in February or after that conversation, my partner was like, Hey, can you just think about it for a couple of weeks? Can you just sit on it? And can we just work on this one project while you're sitting and see how you feel after that? Mm. And that project was Sonic the Hedgehog. Mm. And so it, it was really like, I knew what this project was. It's another project, entertainment focused, right? I'm like, I just couldn't see the correlation with Jesus. Like, I was like, this is like a, you know, I love video games, don't get me wrong, but this is like a blue creature that runs <laughs> and I'm about to make a Chili Cheese Dog franchise. Like, I'm like, is this what God wants me to do? Like, I'm so confused. And I just gave that to God, like, seriously. And again, his voice was like, just sit still, be in this, continue the work. Mm. And I was like, all right. I was so confused, but I was like, okay. But at the same time that was happening, in March of 2023, me, Ben, and another brother, Vincent, and his wife, Ellen, uh, and shout out Johnny, because that's where we all met Johnny, too, is... All of us came together and started talking about Jesus. And out of that conversation, we said, hey, we should just do a Bible study. Mm. And in March to now, it birthed a study for 10 months. Literally every Monday we meet at 730 in East L.A. And that group has grown from five people, 15, 25, to about 70 folks. Whoa. Every Monday night to, to this day. Where do you guys meet? Uh, we meet in the office. The that same you're spot at. that we had yeah. the podcast oh, at. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. where you recorded at. <laughs> yeah. So so God gave us that responsibility mm -hmm. to shepherd these folks and to also just live life with these folks. Folks from similar backgrounds, entertainment, media, yeah. Yeah. entrepreneurship. A lot of different creatives. Um, yeah. I mean, it's LA. So you got people who are acting, producing, yeah. music, dancing, entrepreneurship. Yeah. Yeah. tech like mm -hmm. everybody's there yeah, yeah so god was breathing life into this thing and we weren't doing anything there's no advertising mm. you know what i mean we're not telling nobody but people are talking and it just it, it was just sprouting and this was this beautiful thing and then now i'm like still in the world of like sonic right with mm -hmm. sonic the hedgehog mm -hmm. building this uh entertainment brand out and success wise and virality god takes it beyond this is the most successful project i've ever worked on and and all I did, I did less, mm. which is even crazier to me. I didn't have to white knuckle anything. Mm. I didn't have to force anything to happen. God just breathed on it. Yeah, yeah. Mm. That's when the that's when the the the, the God math steps in. <laughs> God <laughs> math. <laughs> when the math ain't math, and oh, God yeah. steps in. God <laughs> just steps in. It just blows on something. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, yeah, dude. that's so interesting, man. I think, um, you know, I, th I think a couple of things. One, I think, praise God for your guys' heart and your guys' burden for serving. Mm. Uh, the, the, that yeah. community mm, because yeah. we have a phrase and this is not this is I'm not saying this to be derogatory but we used to have mm -hmm. a phrase mm -hmm. about folks we'd meet from your neck of the woods so we're for context we're in San Diego <laughs> okay yeah yeah yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah we're yeah. in Normalville okay I see where this is going bro <laughs> give it to us man <laughs> and every, every time we would meet people mm. we'd have this ongoing joke and we'd be like 
Yeah, they're uh, they're L.A. Christians. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. That's yeah. real. Yeah. I hear you. That's yeah. real, dude. Christians. He'd be like, I love Jesus, but he's like living with his girlfriend. Sure, you know, yeah, he's yeah, smoking yeah. weed, might be selling a little bit of weed, you know. <laughs> he's doing little OnlyFans <laughs> on the so side. Real. Uh-huh. You so know? real. And so that was like our like our ongoing joke was like, yeah, yeah. I can't with the L.A. Christians, mm, man. It's just mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. you got to have a very, very specific <sighs> heart. Right. It's like you know, you mentioned Johnny Chang earlier. Shout out to yeah. Johnny. Yeah. It's like uh, it almost seems like prison ministry, bro. Mm. You know, mm. where where <laughs> y'all just got a burden that I just don't. Yeah. You know oh my that gosh. I just I I am very like. I, I can't do the Hollywood, <laughs> you know, I'm mm-hmm. a, and, and you guys don't give me that vibe at all. Like yeah, you guys oh, are super man, done. Thank you, but thank there are certain you. folks you yeah. will meet that just have this chip on their shoulder, sure. elitist. Mm, I'm, sure. you know, I'm super cool. I'm yeah, going to be yeah, irresponsible yeah. and spend all my yeah, money yeah, on yeah. designer right. and like live out of a closet, yeah. you know, yeah. <laughs> like, like oh there's, a, gosh, there's a zeitgeist yes. there. So anyway, hopefully that's not too brutal of a critique, <laughs> no, that's, but no. that's ultimately but you props know, to you guys. You know what I will say to that? <laughs> I mean, the reason why you may think that is that a lot of it is true. That's mm. like a, that's just the reality mm-hmm. for yeah. Um, a lot of people in general, mm-hmm. I think maybe let's just call it L.A., right? Mm-hmm. You know, it's yeah. the temptation to keep up with the Joneses is mm-hmm. a real thing. And you're not exempt from that as a believer. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just as tempting. And only by the grace of God can you, you know, sort of like look at that as like, that's not for me. Mm-hmm. And and mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, like I was caught up in that, bro, mm-hmm. like straight up. like And it, it was interesting, like I said, Vegas being more Hollywood than Hollywood. Mm-hmm. It was when I was in Vegas. I was mm-hmm. like, yeah, let me stop by the Gucci store real mm-hmm. quick. You know, let's see what's new. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, let's see what's Gucci new store. at the Gucci store. <laughs> real quick. And I'm like, okay, man, I, I look out with a kick myself. <laughs> yeah. you know, like, get wow. out of here, bro. Wow. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I learned my lessons and um, yeah, you know, I mean, that's by awesome. the grace of God. That's yeah. so cool, man. Again, prop, props to you guys because, yeah, that's, that, that's, that's incredible. But I think th- coming from that, while still you guys went to church, mm-hmm, it mm-hmm. sounds like it gives you guys just a, a gentleness and a heart because you know what yeah. it's like to be caught up in some of that stuff. Right. And by the way, the same people say the same <laughs> things about us because we're in California mm-hmm. and well, when you leave in <laughs> California, right? So we get we get the same thing. Right? Is we crazy, just, bro. San Diego is, is a little less <laughs> yeah, Hollywood yeah, yeah, yeah. than Hollywood. That's true. Yeah, so, right, right, right. That's yeah. dope. Okay, so you guys both have worldly success in your respective lanes. Mm. You guys are both crushing it. You're both financially in great spaces, it sounds like, in terms of Mm. the the stuff you guys were doing. And then there's this desire to come together almost from the overflow of the Monday Night Bible Study. Is that that fair to say? And your guys' relationship in doing that? What's interesting, so I'll do the timing on that too, was basically the space was given to us. So even the podcast, let me explain how that happened. Literally, the idea of a podcast was around mm-hmm. just a bit, mm-hmm. but when we met uh, one of our brothers, shout out Daniel, uh, Merch Labs, he creates our merch, love you. <laughs> but when we met Daniel, he's a, a well, I when we were all sitting with Daniel, he's a mentor of uh, Ben's, but he's also a mentor of mine, but we all kind of know each other as friends. We're hanging out, and he goes, you guys should just do the podcast, just do it. Mm-hmm. And we're like, oh man, like maybe, and all this stuff, and we're just kind of talking through it, like, oh, I think it's a good idea. And then he goes, no, I want to buy the equipment for you. Wow. I'm like, whoa, okay. So there's a few cameras, sure mics, you know, the, the the basics that we need. We started on GoPros and we're like, all right, let's let okay, we got the stuff. That same week, another brother goes, use my office space, and that's the space. Just, just use it. Just use it. Just use it. And we're like, whoa. Was it was he was he not using it as much as he was expecting? Like how does how does someone just have an office well, space? The, the original, <laughs> yeah, 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 right. Like you just got a space. The spot is fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To just have a space I know. in LA, yeah, I yeah. Know. and just be like, just just use my office. Well, space. so that's another part of the 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 bigger God picture. So so Vincent and Ellen, they they rented out that space. So at that time, they had rented it out for about five months. I think they got it in November of twenty two. And their original plan was, yo, let's make this into like a co-working space. We'll turn it into a cafe and all this stuff. So that was the original plan. But for five months, they had just been sitting on it and they hadn't moved on it. So when, you know, we met with them, we're like, hey, man, we want to do this podcast. It's like, yo, you should go use our loft. We're like, well, you guys got a loft. So we checked it out. Like, how do you guys just have this? And like, yeah, we've been sitting on it. We just don't know why we're not moving on it. And so it was like... Mm. You know, in hindsight, it was like God was putting that on hold for something because they yeah. felt in their spirit, though that was the original plan, they're like, we just can't move on it yet, but we don't know why. Mm. 
And so we're like, could we do the podcast here? And their immediate answer was like, yes, do the podcast here. And then in that same visit there, you know, we had already done like three weeks of our Bible study and we were just doing this in their living room. Well, at their I, home. I do want to make one correction. They offered the space. Yes. Because we went to go check the space out to talk about how to help him make decisions on the space. Right, right. And that right then and there he says, you guys should use this space. That's, That's it. what it was. Yeah. And and then so by that time, we were three weeks or so into our Bible study in their tiny living room. And then we're like, yo, should we just do the Bible study here? And we moved the Bible study to that so we office. We moved it there. Well. Yeah. And then that's when week after week, it just started growing just like exponentially, just like, yo, there's like 40 people now out of nowhere. And so what we see in hindsight was that space was there. They had a plan for it. God was like, that's not the original it's not ready yet. Let me start building the people to come into this space. And now we look at it as like, whoa, like the podcast turned into the Bible study, turned into this communal space. And now that original vision for them turning it into that co-work space and, you know, the cafe, all of that's coming together now. Mm. So they're like, whoa. Yeah, it was God like a, crazy. It was a just it was mismatched in order, mm -hmm. but it was like, whoa, like God wanted to build a foundation of people first. Mm. And then now all the creative stuff's coming together. So what was their background, the, the fact that they were able to just have a spot in prime sure. LA real estate and so, then, and, and, and mm -hmm. be so open-handed with right. it? Like yeah. what, are the, what is their background and how did they stumble across that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you can talk about Ellen's background. Yeah, so, know each other so a long time. Ellen, um, she and I, we've known each other. She's a dancer, choreographer as well. She's worked in uh, the professional commercial dance industry for years and that's how we know each other. And um, I've only known her as that. So we we're just like, oh, yeah, Ellen's a dancer, Ben's a dancer. We never really um, engaged with each other anything deeper than that until 20, I would say 2019. So right before the pandemic, you know, I had her on uh, my other podcast, uh, Kinja's podcast. Kinja's the company that I'm a co-owner of. And so I had her on there. And there we just talked to like dancers, entrepreneurs, like, yo, what's, what's your, what are you working on? Da, 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 da. And, you know, little did I know, she just started going into her faith journey on that podcast. And I was like, what? I didn't mm. even know you love God like mm -hmm. that. So after that podcast, we started connecting heavy. We're like, yo, like, what's God doing in your life? Mm -hmm. And she's telling me all these personal things. I'm like, hey, I feel like God's rocking my world like this, too, in different ways. So from there, you know, now we know, OK, cool. You're on my radar with like, all right, we're team Jesus over here. <laughs> and um, so she hit me up at the top of last year. So 2023 in in uh February, so like it's been exactly about a year, where she was telling me that she's like, Ben, like I feel like God's been putting just this fire in my heart to build something. And she's like, I feel like it's like it, it involves like the youth and like I want to do like these conferences and I just I I, I want to do something. And she's like, I keep praying about it and God keeps putting you on my heart. Mm. So she just we, we would meet, we would have coffees and things like that. And then um literally like end of February of last year. She hits me up and was like, hey, I, I need to meet with you like ASAP. And I said, okay. Mm. So we met and she's like, man, like God's been putting this, this thing on my heart, this creative agency called Break Bread. And like, I just see like conferences. I see content. I see dancing. I see like us being an agency where we bring people together. And she's just like, God's telling me like, I need to hit you up for some reason. And I'm like, Ellen, this sounds amazing. Let's go. So it just started there. And then, you know, I'm like, hey, I, I know a guy who does business, you know, he does, he builds like, you know, he's in the food space, entrepreneurship, so I hit up Kev, and then I'm like, yo, I just met this homie Johnny Chang, like, he's like this prison minister, like, you know, I think he's he's on to some stuff, like, let me just, so I just started like calling all cars, you know what I mean? I felt like Nick Fury just hitting up all the Avengers, <laughs> just like, yo, man, you should check out this truly, thing that's truly. happening over here. So that's how it started. And then Vincent, who her husband, like he's been in the tech space. Yeah, like low key, like Vincent is just one of those entrepreneurs that so soft spoken, super chill. He used to be a musician, too. He has a very uh, creator side to him. But he's from like Accenture, Deloitte. He has a startup uh, around uh, data analysis and social media. This is something that you would love to see, by the way. You'd be like, you would geek out on this. But he he does it at the highest level, like mm. Walmart. Walgreens, Nike, those are his clients. It's mm -hmm. like insane. So that's who they are. Mm. <laughs> so it's like God just like plucks people out, mm. man, and just changes their heart. It's like wild, wild. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's incredible. So God's kind of orchestrating all this. Mm -hmm. You guys got the space, the Bible study transitions there, then the podcast is there. And now it's kind of coming 
full circle to Ellen's initial vision yeah, yeah. of having this co-op space yep. in there. Yep. Now, are you guys also affiliated with any sort of formal mer- uh, ministries? Are you guys at the same local church? Like, no, that's you know, a- not yet. Okay. Not yet, but we're definitely, everyone's from a different church, okay. actually, which is also super unique. Um, I think what we're now getting more open to is formalizing some partnerships, and that's something that that's happening without us even doing anything, which is great, mm-hmm. and we're just very open to all of it. Yeah, hmm. yeah, and I think the, the cool thing is, um, yes, it's not tied to any single church, um, and, and there are people who are discovering it as they're sort of exploring their own faith journey. So mm-hmm. it's not like this is a, you know, you have to be at some level of whatever to to, to no, show up. And we don't do any marketing for it. People are just through word of mouth. They're like, hey, my friend invited me through this person. And so now we're just like, yo, I don't even know who's showing up and how they're finding out about it. Mm-hmm. But the great thing is, you know, we have people who have been walking with the Lord for decades. And then we have people who are like, yo, I just, I'm kind of looking yeah, I'm trying to figure out who God is. You know, yeah. we're like, hey, all y'all are welcome. Yep. You know, yep. and, and it's really cool to be able to walk alongside people and to for people to get prayed over. We've seen deliverance, we've seen healings, we've yeah. seen people like, you know, reconciliation and broken relationships. All these things happening, um, and we don't do anything fancy. Mm-hmm. None of us have any like crazy yeah. background in whatever sort of ministry or training. We're just like, yo, we love God, and we're just trying to be obedient. We're trying to read the Word. Mm. You know, we're, like we're literally in the book of Acts right now because we just feel like, yo, this feels like the early church. So mm. we're like, let's just start there. Let's just mm-hmm. see what God did back then and let's mm-hmm. see how, you know, how he's working now. The, the format is so simple and we encourage it to whoever's listening because it's literally just read the word and pray for one another. Mm. And that that's literally all we do. There's no, yes, the accolades of the world. I'm sure that gives us a platform for those that need to hear it. I'm sure as they're listening to this, they're like, yo, who are these people? Like all these Christians that are doing all these crazy things. I'm glad that brings the attention. Mm -hmm. But what I would love to say that's very not LA Christian, which is somebody was like, hey man, I got this creator. Can I invite him to the study? And I was like, bro, you can invite your neighbor. Like, I don't even care what he, like he could be someone you just met off the street, dude. Like I literally do not care who it is. If they want Jesus, just please invite them. Mm -hmm. And that's... And that's how it is with everyone in there. And that's the most beautiful thing. i tell you what's crazy. I got into a car accident. <laughs> I got into a car accident with some random. And, you know, it could have been a whole bad situation. But God put it on my heart to like, yo, chill out. Don't be mad. Mm-hmm. Um, talk to the guy. And I just like. I was like, hey, bro, we do this Bible study. <laughs> <laughs> homie, homie came out this past Monday. Wow. He finally I'm like came. the guy who got into a yes. car accident with me. He came. Who's that fault, though? I'm not going to even say it. I'll, I'll, say, I'll say it wasn't me. Okay. <laughs> okay. I mean, was trying to stir the I'll pot, say bro. it wasn't me. So, therefore, it puts me in the position to be, like, justifiably like, yo, man, you kind of messed up. But, like, I chilled out wow. in that situation. Yeah, and then, man. you know, he, you know, was like, yo, man, you kept a cool head, man. Yeah. Like, what's up? I I'm said like, a lot. Probably. Yeah, I was like, yeah. yo, dude, I, I love God, bro. And, you know, we do this yeah. thing. You're more than welcome to come by. And he yeah. came by this past Monday. Yeah, like, I got to no, pray on what? him on Monday, man. That was cool. That's what? Was yeah. like, we didn't even he was, talk in, my, about he was that. in my group, That's dude. Crazy. I got to pray on him. Yeah, yeah, we, I was we'll, like, we'll oh my God, you're later. here. Yeah, so later. tell me the format of the Monday Night Bible Study. Just like uh, Kevin said, man, we just, we, so we, um, the food's a big part of it. And I think this is how God orchestrates it. Right? You, know, you know, Ellen's vision for Break Bread, this collect, you know, creative agency, it's called Break Bread. And we're like, what is breaking bread, right? What is the power of food and, and f- like, you know, communing yeah. over a meal? What does that do? It, it's inviting, it creates intimacy, it creates a home environment. So, you know, we always have food and God somehow provides food all the time, whether people bring it or whether we're like, yo, we got some extra cash. We'll just get some pizzas or whatever. And so it's we'll, we'll, we'll just gather around a table. We eat. And then, you know, about a half hour into it, we're like, OK, cool. Let's just gather around. And then, you know, we just kind of like open up the scriptures and we just start, you know, we're just going through the book of Acts. So we just pick up where we left off last week. We go around, we read and then we, you know, we have somebody who leads kind of the discussion of it. And, you know, you know, Holy Spirit kind of just divinely just comes in and gives us these thoughts and things to share. And then afterwards, we want to give time for people to break out in a small, you know, because in a large setting, not everybody feels comfortable speaking in these larger settings. So we're like, yo, let's create these smaller groups where people can get prayed over. So we stick around for about like another hour or so. And then we just pray. 
and then we kind of chill for a little bit more and then that's it and that's it's pretty I mean, simple man what, what's incredible one of the miracles is that large group so when it's in the large setting imagine like 50 people 60 people in a circle and it literally it's not like popcorn read they just leave the like i'll end the verse and the next person reads it once we're done reading the craziest thing that happens is we go we just want to leave some after leading the discussion giving context we want to leave the room open. We'll sometimes impose a question and people could answer that question or they could just share whatever they feel of the reading. The most incredible things happen in that moment because it's not easy to share in front of 50 people. We've had people come out in tears during that session mm -hmm. with just real, like, whether it's not exactly confession, but just their stories with the Holy Spirit and it just touches you. Mm -hmm. uh, there's been a, a woman that struggled with her, like, Muslim heritage. Mm -hmm that's starting to love Jesus and started like crying. I'm like, that's crazy. Like, mm -hmm. I'm like, not only did you just tell us your whole lives that way, but the context of that is so heavy and they're just going through it. Mm -hmm. We've had a brother talking about like racial issues where he's not upset at the racism that he was feeling. He was upset that he couldn't love on this woman. Mm -hmm. Like, that's wild to me. I'm like, what like mm -hmm. like i would have never and and then the way it's like 50 50 male and female and it's every color mm. brown white black might be the most diverse yellow room that mm -hmm. i've ever been like it, way it just more looks like la that, yeah. even church yeah yeah, yeah. It's wild. yeah it, you know it's funny i i heard this quote recently and they said initially you start out creating because you want to make money mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. you get to a place where you make money so that you can keep creating. Ooh, that's good. Right. Wow. Yeah. And so, like, as I'm hearing, you guys are creating hospitality, you're mm -hmm. creating environment, you're creating this podcast, you're mm -hmm. creating uh, a, a really a space for God to move in a mm -hmm. unorthodox way. Yeah. yeah. Right. And yeah. so it's 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 so interesting to to, to kind of hear that come together. Yeah. Right. And I think oftentimes we start out and we go, you know, oh, if I could just do the dream, if I could just do this thing, <laughs> yeah. right? And yeah. then you get there. And my therapist, he's been saying it, like, we'll talk. And he'll be like, what, what are you, why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? And I was like, well, because if I do this, then I'll be able to do this. And he'll be like, yeah. and then what? Ooh. And I'll be like, well, then I'll be able to do this and this and this. And then he'll be like, and then what? Yeah. Ooh, <laughs> and then I could do, and then what? And right. I'm like, dang, man. oh, man. Because yeah. I'm, I'm already <sighs> doing the thing I would be doing, had, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, yes. so even if I hit all my milestones and all my personal goals and my yes. financial goals and my fitness goals, all these things, I'll just be right where it, I really am, yeah. you wow. know? So why yeah. not enjoy and be it's present good. and love yeah. the the moments that you're in? And, mm -hmm. and I'm not saying that as a way to quail people's desires to sure, go out and sure. do things, yeah, but yeah, yeah. it is interesting to hear you guys saying like, no, 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 like, dude, we've done it. Like, I've done it. I've, mm -hmm. I've, I've been at the peak of my, mm -hmm. my respected vocation, mm -hmm. and I'm telling you that yeah. ultimately it's about Jesus. Mm. Yeah. You know what I've learned with that, though, too, when God gives you some sort of a platform or some sort of... Yeah, visibility exposure to an audience and then you know you kind of get known in that space like god is giving you that not for that to be the the finish line mm -hmm. or that's where you settle and you you just live there like god's like i gave you that because now i got i gave you some keys keys to access people that's good and it, i'm learning and this is like my real time learning of i'm now learning what those keys are and i haven't even fully figured it out i am in process right now of you know okay god I, I think i am now seeing that like cool i gave you that and now let's go here and i'm like where is here though i don't mm. know where here is mm. and i feel very uncomfortable right mm. now i am literally dated i'm fasting i'm doing all the things where i'm like lord i need some clear vision um and yes, it's uncomfortable, but yet there is a peace in knowing that I know that I'm following God's call. So there's safety in that. There's safety in not knowing, but knowing I am following the per the one who is calling me. Therefore, there's safety in that. But it is uncomfortable, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's good. Okay, last question that I want to ask you guys um, is having now you're, you, guys, you guys are doing ministry in the L.A. scene. Oftentimes what we're seeing happening is bigger cities, specifically New York, LA, and San Diego as well, because it's more expensive to live mm -hmm, here, mm -hmm, is mm -hmm. that oftentimes people push out some of those natural, I would say hard wirings God has for us, specifically with, with marriage, family, kids, oftentimes because it's the pursuit of doing the things, 
And then it's also just like expensive, right? Like I gotta <laughs> yeah. like buy a, buy a house to have kids, yeah, and, right? Yeah, like dude. it just gets it gets hard. Yeah, and so, yeah. are you guys encountering any of that in some of this stuff, right? In terms of like, here it's a little slower because I think most people like want to get married, and then they're a bit more hesitant to kids, and then they get around mm. people with kids, and they go, "Kids are freaking amazing." Yeah, I want kids, right? <laughs> but it, 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 is that attention that would you say people within your worlds are experiencing because mm. um declining birth rates mm -hmm. right uh they're saying that the people who are still having kids are christians like pe religious people are the ones having kids and continuing to repopulate Thank which God. is at a, at a <laughs> right mm -hmm. uh 2.1 is the rate to, to just maintain our yeah. society and if you yeah. don't i'm sure you guys are familiar with some of the stuff that's happening in other parts of the world when you don't maintain that yeah, yeah. you create all kinds of social issues and burdens um because there's no one to work for the older population to be supported, right? Mm -hmm, yeah. So I'm talking about it from a pragmatic standpoint, but I'm also talking about it from a very practical, like Paul in First Corinthians saying, "Hey, like it's better to to marry than to burn with passion," mm -hmm. right? So what do you guys what do you guys make of that in terms of just dating and relationships and marriage and family and kids sure. in 2024, but in some of the most expensive places people can live? Yeah, I think I, I would love to speak to that. I'm actually a father of two amazing boys. They're seven and five. Congrats. Uh, thank you. I love my kids. And the grind is real in California. Mm -hmm. Like, it is definitely real here. I know everyone's feeling it, but y'all don't understand. It's expensive in California. Yeah. Yeah, for, for context, <laughs> like, if somebody yeah. wanted to rent a two-bedroom oh, apartment now, and where you live, what would, what would the cost on that Oh, be? now they're paying, like, I don't even, like, 3800 Easily. Close no, to 4000 Yeah, easily. It's nuts out there. Yeah. I'm serious. A one bedroom's like 2400 minimum. Yeah. Like in K-Town, a two bedroom's like 3800 easily. <laughs> wow. Without this, breaking and a sweat, and these, and these are like... It's, it's a little, I think it's a uh -huh. little less here. Just, just maybe a, yeah. a little and less. Yeah, that, and that's still bad. Yeah. And that's yeah. like 1,100 square feet probably, too. Right, like right, That's right. like not even that much. So the struggle with finances is real, but there's something that I guess... This is how I look at everything now. Today, I mean, I'm I'm also learning in real time all the time, and my relationship with finance is so different. Mm -hmm. Is if if I'm dealing with the God of the universe and He has given me on mission, like He's like, "Hey, Kevin, you are going to do this." Why would He not take care of everything else? I know that sounds so cliche, and I know the folks that are listening are thinking, "Man, you're saying that because you've you've built something for yourself." I'm gonna tell you right now, I come from nothing. Mm -hmm. Like I made seven hundred bucks, my rent was seven hundred, and that was my life. <laughs> so like I didn't have anything. Before that, it was even worse. Like I come from a single family home. I'm not one of those spoon fed Asians that you see out there. I'm not no harshing on anyone, but I'm just saying I'm not that guy. I came from a single family. My mom was raised two kids. We we're in the east side of LA, and we were surviving. Like that was life. And then I would use a fake address to go to a nice school because that's the way you do it. But like. <laughs> <laughs> And, and and that's that's the life I come from. Not that I'm saying like, oh, just because of that, like, oh, like you're saying this because now you're more comfortable. That's not even what it is. I literally had to change the way I look at money, to change the way I look at what the world tells me what is important. And it made me realize literally everything I have, the breath that I have today is Jesus, like mm. literally. That's good. And I have to wake up, feet on the ground, Daily bread is all I can ask for, and I have to live for today. If I don't do that, I'm going to lose my mind. And I think we even talked about this on the podcast when we were sharing, mm -hmm. and I still live by that so much. And so when I look at my sons, when I look at my wife, there's still so much hope. I recently went to a conference meeting different Christian leaders across the nation, and what was really cool was listening to the excited folks that have kids, listening to the perfect people in place combating the enemy where it needs to be in those places of government, politics. You don't have to worry about the, what's crazy is I'll wake up, watch the news one day, and I'll feel like, oh, God, there's so many mm -hmm. problems. I have to fix it all. No, you don't. Mm, that's good. I don't have to fix the politics. I don't like, sure, I could partake, of course. I could partake in education. I could partake in my raising my kids, of course. But besides doing my part, it is not my job to do all those things because God has the perfect soldiers in those spaces fighting for us in the body of Christ. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that's good. Man. That's good. Yeah. I think for me, like as the 
the the single guy that doesn't have kids <laughs> in the room and probably the well i am the oldest person in the room yeah um you know the desire for it is absolutely there and um you know what i'm learning also is that god honors our desires you mm -hmm. know what i mean and um god's timing is way better than ours you know what i mean our timetable we mm -hmm. think by this age i should have this right. i should have all these things in place right. and um Man, all throughout scripture, people had plans. God was like, <laughs> I got better ones. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I got a good. better timing. And, you know, when he when that's he good. said to Abraham, he's going to make him a father of all nations, that didn't happen for a long time. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I'm learning that though I have desires that um, I feel like God has placed on my heart, I think he's teaching me to trust that his timing is never late. Mm. And... If there is a reason, like if I am single because God wants to use my singleness, then he's going to keep me single until it's no longer time for that. And then when it's time to transition for the next phase of where he wants to use me as a father, as a husband, then that's when he's going to give me that. So, um, yeah, I'm, and it's it's tough, man. You know, I see like literally all my peers around me, even the younger ones, married kids. And, I, and then it's very easy to be like, what's wrong with mm. me? Like, what mm. am I doing yeah. wrong? You know what I mean? And. Um, of course, like that's not to dismiss it. It's just like, let me take all of that. Like, God, like, Lord, I have these desires and, and I know you invite me to give them to you. I give them to him daily. <laughs> I'm like, Lord, mm -hmm. all right, like, what's up? You know, but I think <laughs> with all of that, God is saying, I love that your heart posture is you are down to trust me and yeah. surrender it to me, even though I know it's hard for you. Yep. God's not saying it should be easy. Like, bro, why are you having such a hard time with this? He's mm -hmm. like, it's okay. Mm. So I think with all that, my desires for it are there, but I trust that when that season comes, yeah. it'll come. That's beautiful, man. Yeah, mm -hmm. we're going to get you hitched, bro. <laughs> After this podcast. In Jesus' name. We're going to drop, uh, <laughs> drop your Instagram handle. Ladies, tap in. All right, we're going to get you right. All right, uh, oh let folks God. know where they can find out more about you guys individually and then obviously the podcast. And we'll, we'll yeah. link up the podcast somewhere up here. Awesome. Yeah, awesome. at Good Service Pod. We're on uh, TikTok. We're on IG. We're on YouTube. Look up Good Service. That's the main one. And then uh, my personal, I'm mainly active on Instagram, BTech underscore Ben Chung. Uh, I'll same thing on, on TikTok. Yeah, my personal is at the Kevin's Hall, S E O. Uh, I'm pre Google though. <laughs> you are the original S E O. I know. I always say that. <laughs> at, Ke uh, at the Kevin S E O. Yeah. Okay. Word up, man. Appreciate you, brothers. Thank you so much. Thank you, All bro. Right. We're out of here. Peace. According to the Bible, that prayer is extremely important in terms of us being transformed from the inside out when we get aligned with God's will. For the Christians watching this channel, I want you guys to implement these spiritual disciplines in your day-to-day -day life. And the only way I've been able to do this consistently is through writing down my prayers in a prayer journal that does a few things. One, it allows me to reflect and come to God humbly and ask him to move on my behalf. And two, it allows me to document my prayers, which ultimately helped me remember the very things that I was praying for and see the hand of God tangibly in my life when he answers them. So I would urge you, consider writing down your prayers. It could be in a blank notebook. It could even be on your phone. Or you could check out the one I personally designed and used from my own quiet time and spiritual discipline that I think will be a huge blessing. It's the exact structure and system that I've used for years to pray and be more consistent in my spiritual disciplines. You can pick yours up today by clicking the link in the pinned comment below. All right, I'll see you over there. Peace.